Hello, in this video we will take a look at how to address data storage and preservation for the SSF Data Management Plan or DMP. My name is Gero Scheuer, I work in research data management support at the Open Science team at the University of Bern. In section 3 of the DMP template, the SSF asks two questions. The first one regards storage and backup of data during your research project. The second one is about the preservation of your data after the end of the project. These two points must be clearly distinguished. On the one hand, there's the data storage and backup during the project phase. This should be described in DMP section 3.1 if it was not already covered in DMP section 2.2, where you describe the storage of data that needs special protection. Backups, in particular, are an important part of any storage strategy. This includes the frequency of your backups, whether they will be performed manually or automatically, and security measures, if applicable. Especially in research groups, it is essential to agree on clear responsibilities for taking backups. So much for storage and backup during your project. On the other hand, there's the preservation after the end of the project, which should be described in DMP section 3.2. You should explain if you keep your data beyond the end of the project or if you delete all or part of it. In the latter case, you should describe your selection criteria for the data you want to retain. You also need to determine the file formats for preservation. Open, non-proprietary formats like TXT or CSV are best for preservation, as they are most likely to be readable in the future. Furthermore, you should explain for how long you want to keep your data after the project end. The SSF recommends to keep them for at least 10 years, but in some research areas there are legal obligations to keep them for longer. A very important point here is to clarify the responsibility for the data after the project end. This may include tasks like transferring the data to new storage devices, regularly checking the integrity of the data, and deleting the data if applicable. The person or persons in charge of long-term data management must be identified in the DMP for later reference. Let me briefly clarify some terms that are important for planning data storage and backup. Section 3.2 of the DMP is about long-term data storage. This is often confused with public data sharing. However, storing and sharing have different objectives and different infrastructures must be used. The aim of long-term storage is to keep a copy of a dataset for a longer time period, for example 10 years. It is intended as a safe backup copy of data that have been publicly shared, but also of unpublished data that you may want to analyze at a later point. Often managed servers at institutes are used for long-term storage, but if you can't do that, you can store your data on your own devices, but you must regularly check the integrity of the data to prevent deprecation. Data sharing, by contrast, aims at increasing transparency of research and at enabling data reuse. For data sharing, it is best to use repositories. We'll say more about this topic in the next video. Although most repositories have long-term storage policies in place, it is best practice to store another copy of your data separately for the long term, especially if you did not share all the data you generated in your project. Finally, here are some contact points for help and support around data storage and backup. In short, it is best to work with specialists wherever possible, either at your faculty department or institute, or at the central IT department of the University of Bern. Thank you for your attention. The next video will walk you through part 4 of the DMP, Data Sharing and Reuse.